might have noticed driving around Albuquerque at night, some of the city's thousands of streetlights are now a different color. Fox 5 first reported about the unusual illumination at the beginning of the year, impacting intersections and pedestrian crosswalks throughout the valley. I'm out here in the middle of the night on Medical Center Parkway for this video because this is a question I get on the Facebook page at least three to four times a week. I'm pretty sure you can tell those are shining purple tonight. The city just swapped more than 22,000 sodium lights for LEDs back in 2017. And this is not intentional. They are not supposed to be this color. I would guess it has something to do with saving energy. Is it aliens? No conspiracy theory behind the light. No conspiracy, exactly. It's beautiful. It's different than the others, so I like it. A mistake revealed itself across the U.S., even being spotted in some provinces in Canada. Also in Ireland. Analysis from a group called... Uh, hold on a second. LED Systems Reliability Consortium, or LSRC. God, that's a mouthful. Revealed that the problem came from a process called... Uh, hold on a second. Delamination. What's that? Well, it's actually pretty simple. LED lights are manufactured with three main components. A blue LED, a layer of yellow phosphor, and an adhesive made of silicon. The phosphor covers the entire LED and is only held on by the silicon. Over time, in this case about five years, the adhesive was losing its stick and would lead to the phosphor cracking and chipping off. This is the lamination, and it led to the blue LED being more exposed, which created a more bluish purple white. Now some questions. Why are they using just a blue LED? I mean, they could surely just use a red, green, and blue LED. That would solve the problem, right? I mean, red, green, and blue create white light, right? First off, that's not a bad question because most of our tech is lit with RGB setups, right? Like, I mean, I can look at my phone and it's lit with RGB pixels. Let's take a look at this example. Here's my hand being lit by a red, green, and blue light. It's not perfect, but you're getting a white light out of it. Now I'm lighting my hand with a blue light and I'm going to mix it with a yellow one. And guess what? You also get a white light. And also if you use a yellow filter, you pretty much get the same result. In the end, a blue light is being used because it's cheaper to produce. I mean, think about it. If you had to choose between three LEDs and one in a filter, I think it's pretty obvious. Second question, uh, where are we getting the purple lights then? It's coming from the LEDs where the yellow phosphor has not fully delaminated yet. Oddly enough, when the yellow phosphor is under an ultraviolet light, they do display a bit of red among the yellow as well. So what we can assume is that this is mixing with the blue LED, or it's creating a more warmer blue, or as we call it, purple. Finally, uh, why was the adhesive failing? Well, according to the research right here, I have it written right here, uh, we don't know. There was some speculation that vibrations from the cars driving by was causing the phosphor to fall off, but I haven't found any evidence to support that. There was also concern that the LEDs were overheating, but thermal imaging testing showed that that was likely not the case either. The most likely reason I could find is that the adhesive just wasn't meant to last longer than five years. Uh, you can think of the silic if the silicone overcures, it could get brittle. Um, so there could be some issues like that, or it could just be the silicone they chose just wasn't the right one for this application. So who is responsible for all this? Well, this is the most interesting part. The LSRC received 28 faulty lights from the North Carolina Department of Transportation to study. And of the 28 lights, all of them came from one brand. That's where Acuity Brands comes in. AEL and DTL provide you the industry's most comprehensive portfolio of utility LED lighting and control solutions from a company you can rely on. American Electric Lighting. I will be honest, there is a part of me that when I was researching this, I kept thinking, is this really a big issue? I mean, it's just purple lights. Who cares? The only real problem they can cause is that they'll just make the nightlife look a little bit prettier, right? Oh, uh, no, they're actually pretty serious. You see, when you lose that yellow phosphor, you lose also the key reason why you're using this light. It's 
meant for visibility, not meant for aesthetics. Once you lose that yellow phosphor, things become riskier because the human eye is not evolved to see well under blue light. We're really good at seeing things under green or yellow light because, I mean, have you been outside in the last six months? But our ability to see gets drastically worse under a blue light. This lack of visibility, especially at crosswalks and traffic stops, is just an accident waiting to happen. Look closely at the left side of your screen. There is someone about to cross the street under a purple streetlight on Boulder Highway in Henderson. But here, pedestrians can be hard to see. Now get up, y'all. So the response was pretty swift. The lights had to be replaced. The difference, night and day, yay. Looking at this intersection now, I mean, you can see it crystal clear. The light, look at it now, look. We can see a pedestrian from here. Yeah, we can see the lady walking across the street right now. Hey! And because the problem was inherent in all the lights installed, all of them had to be replaced. That's potentially hundreds of thousands of lights. And I'm being conservative about those numbers. It could have been way higher. Best way I can compare it is, is it's like the bird flu. Finding in one chicken, you gotta get rid of them all. What the cluck? Now, Acuity did release a statement that said that they were not the only ones that were dealing with this issue and that all the lights would be replaced under warranty. About that first part though, I've tried to look into seeing if there were any other companies that were experiencing something like this or had a press release about it. And they're the only ones I could find. In fact, uh, Adam Rogers, a reporter from Insider, found that, uh, and I quote, Every city with purple lights that responded to my queries or has public records on the matter bought its LEDs from Acuity, end quote. I also found that Acuity Brands is the largest North American lighting manufacturer, as far as market share goes. And this follows along with what I said in my video about graphics cards. The largest seller, the largest company, or the largest manufacturer in terms of market share is having a problem. The whole market is having a problem. Tactile feedback, rigid body. Plus, it really doesn't help their case that every video I found that examines these faulty lights are Acuity brand lights. But what keeps me from completely disagreeing with them is that they didn't actually produce the LEDs themselves. A look into their 10K filing from 2018 shows that they purchased some of their LEDs from third-party manufacturers. About 22%. Most of it coming from China. Also, there was a 10K filing from 2023, which revealed that Acuity had received $13 million in recovery from a specific manufacturer due to it producing faulty streetlights from 2017 to 2019. And who that is? Well, it's simple. It's a company called I Don't Know. I tried looking into it. Genuinely tried. Couldn't find anything. <laughs> Well, at the same time, like, I don't really care who it was because in the end, Acuity released faulty lights. They must suffer the financial repercussions for it. It's their brand. My brand! And we saw that because in their 10K filings, it makes mention of the warranty cost that they had to make in order to replace the lights. This graph here shows what Acuity paid in warranty costs from fiscal year 2021 up to 2024. 2021 comes to about $32 million. The cost then got out of hand with warranty costs peaking to $52.4 million in 2022. In fact, I looked at the 2024 filing and it showed that it's staying in that range as well. The drastic rise in warranty costs fits pretty well with the time frame for the faulty streetlights that were made between 2017 and 2019, which gives them a pretty easy to chart five year span. And in the end, things are being resolved. Lights are being replaced and because Acuity released a faulty product, they are having financial repercussions from it. Which brings me to this, far too often we love to focus on companies that fail in massive ways. You know, your Enrons, your FTXs, your Ford Pintos. Now look, it's for a good reason. Failing in such epic proportions, it's a great teacher. But we should also be focusing on the businesses that fail and then do the right thing afterward. Obviously, it's not a sexy but it does show that the system works. Now, sure, it is also a reminder that the cheapest thing isn't always going to be the best thing, and that's true. And because of our more globalized industry, this provides uh, more lax standards, and more than likely we're going to be seeing stuff like this happen more often. Also, mistakes just happen. I'll be honest with you, when researching this, I couldn't really find anything on if they could prove that 
they had done any sort of research on whether or not this adhesive would last longer than five years or not. I just couldn't find anything. But I also know that if nothing was done, this could have been far worse. Potentially lives lost and massive lawsuits. How you respond to those mistakes shows a lot too. Okay, first off, I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching. This is the second video on the channel. Uh, and good Lord, I have been just blown away by the response. I am so thankful that uh, you guys have been watching and uh, received, a, as of recording this, we got like 70 subscribers. And I, that's like 70 more than I was expecting. The first video within the first week got a thousand views, which is absolutely crazy i have not been expecting that i am so blessed so thankful thank you guys so much for that and uh i mean it has motivated me to keep making more and i'm really excited about the next one and what i'm gonna do with that yeah uh thank you guys so much for being along for the journey and uh, for those of you just joining us uh you know thanks for coming along take care well i'm just so glad marco that you figured out that it's not aliens. <laughs> <laughs>